is the third year of the Digital Design Weekend uh, during the London Design Festival at the V&A. And um, this year we celebrate also the Alan Turing Centenary. My robot is called Paul and um, Paul is a robot that draws people uh, who sit in front of it. The way he does drawings is based on the way I used to do drawings by hand. Uh, I studied that as a, I do a PhD on uh, observational drawings, so I use some of my research to make this kind of robot. The piece we see here is a piece um, that allows people just to walk up and play music together. So the idea is to give everybody the possibility to contribute into a collaborative musical composition. And that the idea was to build a system that is able to use for anybody, also for people that are not um, musical trained, in order to transfer the, the, the experience and the joy of, of making music to, to a much broader audience. This piece is called My New Robot Companion. It's a kind of new version of a robot that we've worked on over a period of time. We're both artists in residence at Hertfordshire University in the Computer Science Department and we're very interested in kind of the ethical implications of social robotics, the idea of robots in the home. Um, do we want robot companions? People apparently report that they're interested in having robots as companions in the home. They want humanoid robots. These robots don't particularly need faces for any technical reasons, but um, faces, people say they want them to have faces and they want them to have heads. So part of the interesting thing is what kind of head do you kind of put onto it? Well, it's it's uh, interesting from a a robot building perspective because obviously robots are primarily built by computer scientists or, or uh, people in, in the field, sort of academic field of, of robotics. So we're actually coming up against a lot of uh, unique challenges uh, to build an art robot because people just aren't dealing with the kind of issues that we're dealing with. Diamantini is a kinetic robotic uh, artwork. It's a collaboration between myself and David Rai, a roboticist from the Australia Centre for Field Robotics at the University of Sydney and the National Institute of Experimental Arts at the University of New South Wales. With Mark Alija and Cendric Wellenberg, who is a wonderful vision programmer who's upstairs as we speak. Diamandine is a five-year art research project, so she's currently on her third year and this is the world premiere. It's the first time we present here autonomous. There are different controllers. What you can see is the two cameras. This is her vision system. This is how she gets her information about the space and the people uh, wirelessly. It's been transformed to her computer. And then she has some built-in sensors as well. So it's a combination of vision and, and built-in sensors. We are gathering EEG recordings of people perceiving the depth in auto stereograms uh, and this is all contributing to a database that we're building in order to make uh, a piece of robotically carved sculpture and what we're interested in is uh, recording people's responses during the act of depth perception because what we'll be doing eventually is uh, <coughs> creating a large hole in a, in a block of stone robotically manufactured so there's a kind of a poetic connection uh, between the act of perceiving depth in these auto stereograms and the idea of uh, the hole in the block of stone. This is a, a, sound, a sound portrait of Alan Turing. I create sound portraits which are like conventional portraits but using sound, sounds of what people do, sounds of where they come from and uh, so here I have a, a collage of sounds, sounds of the nicking machine, sounds of the bomb, sounds of experts talking about Alan Turing and I compile them to make a biography or character study of, uh, of Turing. This is 
is um, a second prototype for a touch sensitive light installation and it's also an audio installation so when you touch the different light nodes they'll generate a series of random um, light patterns and also that will be fed into a music sequencer as well. I'm Tina Beck, I'm the artist of Tracking You. The technology is um, Ubisense and Ubisense is sort of uh, supporting this project by letting us use their technology. We got our active RFID tags inside and you got sensors up which are the kind of grey boxes so the whole space is, is tracked through sensors and they know where the capes are up, you know, completely X, Y, Z coordinates, they know everywhere it is. And we've added the sound and the design to Ubersense technology. So I'm generating sound now by movement. So I'm tracked, creating a whooshy winny sound, which I, it's the green cape sound. If I'm wearing the pink cape, I will get a different type of sound. And you get a bit of chaos, you get a lot of play, you get a lot of laughing. I'm presenting today this technology that I call Mojis, which allows to transfer everyday objects into musical instruments just by placing a contact microphone into it. Um, the idea is to analyze the vibes that the user makes when it touches an object and to convert them um, to um, useful information that will be converted into music, really. If I tap, then it makes this bass sound. But if I touch it gently, then it makes a completely, completely different kind of sound. And the same is true for, for kind of this one. So the scratch makes this sound. But if I tap gently, it makes this sound. My name is Mike Blow. I'm a sound and installation artist, and I've made this piece called Solar Work Number Two, which is uh, six solar-powered sound units placed in a tree here. The sound-producing um, oscillators are housed in these gramophone horns, and uh, they're powered from solar panels, which are in which are in these uh, jars here. The sun hits the solar panel, it charges the circuit, and what's nice about them is they instantaneously transform the, uh, the sunlight into sound. So as soon as the sunlight changes, goes behind a cloud, or if the wind blows and the leaves cast shadows, then you hear changes in the sound. I decided to make a sound that was quite quiet um, so that it exists in a kind of dialogue with the environmental sounds. It doesn't blast them out. These massive number computers were so fast that one such machine could do the work of 10,000 human computers with calculators. Hello, my name is Jason Singh. I'm a human beatboxer, vocal sculptor, and I've produced a 30-minute set for London Design Festival Digital Weekends um, based around the works of Alan Turing. Um, the set kind of incorporates a lot of material woven in with my voice and to create all sorts of compositions and, and sound pieces and musical pieces, um, bringing together beatboxing and digital technology. Um, so much of my work, as well as an acoustic musician, is based around using technology and, and software. So for me, celebrating the work of Alan Turing is quite important because I wouldn't be able to do what I do if I didn't have machines like samplers, computers, controllers, which all use computer technology. So for me, it's just an amazing opportunity to celebrate the work of an, of an incredible person who's given so much to the world. So, I'm Michael Burton. I'm Amidja Gornita. I'm Louise Ashcroft. And I'm Samuel Lewis. And uh, we're with the piece, The Algae Opera. Um, and in essence, we're using the opera singer um, as a source of carbon dioxide to feed algae. Um, and we've created the suit in behind to capture the carbon dioxide to feed the algae, uh, which then is processed into food um, over here. And eventually we would like to uh, feed that back to the audience.
Emily from Muztech. Um, we're an organisation that aims to get more women practising within arts and technology. So we run workshops, we put on exhibitions and events. Um, today we are running um, a soft circuit robot workshop. Um, last year, as part of the Digital Design Weekend, we commissioned 20 female artists to hack teapots. So that was a showcase which was on at the b &A for a few months following as well. Um, so Anna's going to explain a little bit about yes, the soft circuit robot. Today. So today we're making this toy robot. From, uh, with soft circuits, stitching the circuit with conductive thread, and attaching a small battery, and making uh, buttons so that the eyes can light up. Single pin music box. So it's about like 504 all together and there is like 18 different music scales. This is actually all wired up in the, the table connected with the wire and uh, you can see the switches on the table that he can actually adjust the speed of each music box. It has actually got a different sound and also different level of speed so it's not actually you listen to everything at the same time each one has got different speed it's like a, the random music 